yes, yes. So hairless hair. Today we have one of Dimash's own compositions. This is El Amor en Ti, which means the love in you in Spanish. So I guess this will be sung in Spanish. I've not yet heard Dimash sing in Spanish. This is from the Almaty concert. Dimash wrote the music and apparently the lyrics are by Regina de Ovando and Dr. Hildegard Wöhler. Do let me know if this is not correct information that I found online. I had a look at the lyrics and it appears to be a song about chaos and unrest, whether that be as a human society or within oneself. The lyrics look to be quite metaphorical. There's a lot of symbolic contrast as well, such as dark versus light, understanding and illusion. So with this in mind, I'm curious to see how the music might reflect these lyrics. Will it be manic, chaotic, discordant, or will it be more calm and peaceful and harmonically pure? Or a mix of all these things. It's quite a long performance. The video at least is nearly six and a half minutes long. I've received many requests for this performance ever since my first Dimash reaction. Quite a few of them say that that Dimash harmonizes with himself in this, so that would be cool to see. So I think let's get straight into it. And just a heads up, I'm going to try a different format today. I'm going to film myself watching the whole concert in one go without any interruptions. And then during the editing, I will separate this performance into the various analysis sections, just like I normally do. So hopefully there won't be too much of a format change for you. Alright, so here's our first pause point just before Dimash clad in white enters. So to go back to the beginning, before the first Dimash we hear, Dimash dressed in black, baritone Dimash, we get this pensive music. Overall, we are in F minor. And then we change chords, but the change is not just one chord, it's two chords in quick succession, which are these two chords. D flat minor and D flat major. If we voice all three of these chords closely together, and then if we go through the chords quickly, we can see that the notes don't move much. So the various instruments playing these notes don't need to move that much. This creates a more closed overall feel, kind of alternating back and forth. To me, it provides an atmosphere of doubt, uncertainty. And the choice of moving very quickly from D flat minor to major is interesting as well. It not only adds suspense because it's a bit ambiguous harmonically speaking, we're thinking, hang on, are we major happy or minor sad? But the note that causes this change, E to F, that's the standout feature of the music at this point, and it is a chromatic inflection. Chromatic changes like this moving by just one note, they are just suspenseful. 
So we get Dimash singing in this lower register of his to start with. We have this opening section and then the phrase that I want to focus on, his local low note at this point we're about to hear is this here, this B flat. Speaking about disorder wanting to dominate, it's a dark feeling overall, and visually we get that too. Just after that lowest note we've heard so far, we then get a sustained note, which is the local top, the highest note of this phrase. Yeah. Our lowest note was down here, and this note is up here. That's one seventh above the low note. It's not quite an octave, it's discordant. He then approaches the end of this phrase chromatically. Chromaticisms are looking to be a prominent feature of the music. So in this phrase so far, we went from here to here, back down to here. This is a very unnatural musical skeleton for this phrase, jumping up and down by these discordant intervals. Some form of resolution then comes at the end of this phrase with the word aki, meaning here. He hits a new local low. So he goes down to here. And then he rises, which leads into the next phrase, which is higher in pitch. The next phrase, sometimes the world feels big and how he wishes this could change. It's a lyric of hope, so it's elevated both emotionally and in terms of literal pitch. We heard chromaticism there, and just after that we get another chromaticism. A few seconds later, we hear the new highest note Dimash has sung so far. That's this E. So Dimash has so far sung nearly two octaves. And this is just the baritone section. And then again, chromatic inflections. when talking about pain and fear. They're really underpinning everything because just after that we hear this. It's this motif. Kind of like the secondary melody to Dimash's melody. It's really weird seeing this extremely happy crowd considering the subject matter he's singing about. I guess everyone is just ecstatic to see such a spectacle with this 30 foot Dimash amidst the darkness elsewhere. And then just before we carry on and get onto the white Dimash, the tenor Dimash, how operatic is this bit? This kind of croaky voice slide into the next note. <laughs> Oh, 
On that note, I do like the three dimashes, a kind of cliche way to differentiate between the same person multiple times, the same outfit in different colors, suit and cape, but the three different voice types as well, black, baritone, white, tenor, red, counter tenor. The first time I ever heard Dimash sing was his SOS Digital performance. If you haven't seen my reaction video to that, please do check it out, card for that will be up here. But that was what really surprised me about him. How he not only has the range to sing these different parts, but how he changes his voice type through altering the methods by which he produces sound when he sings. So now we get the Dimash dressed in white, tenor Dimash coming in, a nice visual representation of the lyrics, which are talking about darkness and light, or shadow and light. For the first 20 seconds of tenor Dimash, we don't hear anything too crazy or spectacular. This is the highest note we get so far. Which leads into that same chromatic descending passage we had earlier. This time it's just up the octave. But then after that, he gives us that first real wow moment. Straight in on that top C. Then after this, we hear the same motif that we pointed out earlier. But this time it's sung by the choir. The effect of the choir singing, I think, is quite powerful. It certainly adds a level of intensity to the performance, especially when you couple with the fact that Dimash is now moving up in his register and starting to sing these higher notes. And it's worth noting that we now have a beat as well, at least a constant beat in the percussion. This definitely gives the music a bit more of a modern, contemporary feel, and it keeps the rhythmic flow going. Overall, because of these things, I feel that there's an elevated level of urgency in the music, which complements the lyrics here. The lyrics are more hopeful and positive, speaking of light embracing you, flying with wings free, love. So as it seems like things are becoming a bit more urgent, a bit more intense, Dimash moving up in pitch, he begins to use the blended voice of his. <laughs> That's that voice we often hear him use when he's singing about something pained or anguished. We get a new highest note as well. And then the verse that follows, the bass line really caught my attention. I think it's very interesting and very well thought out. I won't play the whole verse, but overall... For this whole verse overall, it goes... And then it repeats this note here when we feel like we should move. And then it continues down. And then again it repeats this note when it feels like we should move. And then it finally returns to the starting note. To complete this one octave descending cycle. Those repeated notes I was talking about. So to maintain this downward trajectory, it repeats a couple of notes even when it feels unnatural to do so. This downwards momentum in the bass part, the part underpinning everything, the harmonic foundation, is also contrasting Dimash, who's moving upwards. And then of course we get a new person emerging. Who's this then? Red Dimash, countertenor Dimash, male soprano Dimash. There's certainly an element of mysticism now. We hear no lyrics, Red Dimash does not sing lyrics, and the chord progression as well underneath. Here's one example of some strangeness I felt in the harmony with the Red Dimash. So Dimash sings. That's pretty much as high as a typical chorister is expected to sing. Maybe it's just me, but when he sings this note, I'm expecting this chord. I think that's what we naturally expect because the chord pattern here would have sounded like this. So what happens? Well, it's the piano part. It changes this note to this note. So instead of we hear C major has been transformed into C minor. I think why this sounds a little bit strange is because if we move from the chord beforehand, Every single one of these notes to move to C minor moves up by the same interval. They both move up two notes. 
From what I've heard so far, unnaturalness is definitely a theme in this song. And then just before live, Dimash comes in and starts singing. The two noticeable tropes that we've heard, chromaticism and unnaturalness, are exactly what we get to finish this phrase. Wow, blimey, that was different. That was different to, well, anything I've seen before, really, I think. There were a lot of great, great things in that performance. If that was the first time I ever saw Dimash, I would say he's inspired by or influenced by Michael Jackson. The way he was dressed from his shoes, socks and trousers, the shiny top, those oohs he was doing. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, all I can say is that must have been amazing to see live. I don't know how big those screens are, but wow. And I read as well when I was looking up this song that in the performance, all the lights were turned off, which we can see really enhanced this idea of darkness that was spoke about so much in the song and obviously enhances the atmosphere as well. So Dimash is using these vocal runs that I've not really heard before. I've heard him do this a few times, but in a completely different context. <laughs> The ones he does here, I associate more with more contemporary R&B or soul music. Overall, live Dimash is the most modern style Dimash I've heard, in the sense that he's singing with not that many classical elements. And musically, this section is much more agitated sounding. Or maybe we should use the word intense again. <laughs> We hear irregular beat stresses in all the prominent parts, such as the strings, the piano, the choir. This makes the silences more impactful when we hear them, such as here. And we hear the bass refusing to move off one single note, despite the chords moving in the other parts. Shortly after that, we reach the real climactic moment, all the Dimash's singing together. I like how the red Dimash, the countertenor, still has no lyrics. He's only singing vowel sounds, which naturally separates him from the other Dimash's. Also, red Dimash has more of an independent part because he's still singing when the others aren't singing. <laughs> And then a little bit further on, White Dimash, the tenor Dimash, he's no longer tenor Dimash. 
he sings higher than Red Dimash at that point. But he's using that blended, that pained blended voice to get up there. It's a completely different sound to the operatic control focused type of singing that the Red Dimash is doing. White Dimash goes up to here and White Dimash is singing in octaves with Black Dimash, which means Black Dimash goes up to this note in his baritone voice. You know, that's pretty much towards the top of the tenor range. So each different Dimash themselves are covering multiple voice parts in terms of ranges, but they're also maintaining their voice type style, the style of voice they're using as best they can. It's a literal showcase of Dimash's vocal versatility. And then we move forward and the climactic moment is now over and we don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> Silence, suspense, and then... Ah, we get a key change. This takes us back to the same key we opened in again with the baritone Dimash singing. And then the other Dimashes come in and it's Red Dimash who has the standout high note here. That's this top C your top note of a typical soprano, before live Dimash finishes with, again, this rather modern riff, and he's choosing to use an airy voice for it. Very modern in style. Yeah, and shout out to the other live performers there as well. They put on a great, great show. All the instrumentalists, the singers, yeah, very, very, very nice, solid performance. Well, that was certainly different. Must be so, so cool to have been there to see that. Yeah, very cool and very nice to see one of Dimash's own compositions. I'm sure all of his Spanish dears would be happy as well, the fact that he's singing in Spanish. All right, let's leave it there. Thank you to everyone who recommended that one to me. Would appreciate a like and subscribe. If you enjoy my content, want to support me, vote on future polls, you can do so by joining the Patreon or YouTube memberships linked in the description below and I will see you next time.